We've previously discussed measures of morbidity to track new and existing cases of disease. Equally important to public health practitioners in the surveillance of disease is measuring mortality. One measure of mortality is the mortality rate. Mortality rates are typically calculated in the same way as cumulative incidents. That is, mortality rates are typically reported in units of number of deaths in a certain time span, say one year, per number of people, say 1,000 population. All cause mortality rates measure risk of death from any cause, and cause-specific mortality rates measure risk of death from a specific cause. Another way of measuring mortality is the case fatality rate, which is a measure of disease severity. Case fatality is measured as, out of a number of people with a disease, how many die during a certain time span after disease onset or diagnosis. For example, in a population of 100,000 people, 20 have a certain disease, and 18 die from that disease within one year. The mortality rate for this disease is 18 out of 100,000, or 0.018%, which is pretty low. However, the case fatality rate is much higher at 18 out of 20, or 90%. So although this disease has a low mortality rate in the general population, those with the disease have a high chance of dying from it. Because of this differentiation, case fatality can be viewed as a measure of disease severity. It measures risk of death specifically among people who have the disease. Another way of measuring mortality is called proportionate mortality. Proportionate mortality is the number of deaths due to a specific disease out of the total number of deaths in a given time span. It gives us a way of identifying major causes of death because it allows us to answer the question, most, most deaths are due to what diseases? We have to be careful to not misinterpret proportionate mortality as risk of death though. To clarify this, let's look at an example. Suppose that we have mortality measures on a population in 2010 and 2020. The all-cause mortality rate in 2020 is half the level in 2010, but the proportionate mortality for heart disease in 2020 is twice what it was in 2010. If we look at this increase in proportionate mortality and conclude that the risk of dying from heart disease is increasing, this would be an incorrect conclusion. We can actually compute the cause-specific mortality rate for heart disease using the all-cause mortality rate and the proportionate mortality. The proportionate mortality of 10% in the year 2010 tells us that 10% of the 40 deaths per 1,000 population was due to heart disease. So four deaths per 1,000 population are due to heart disease. We can do similarly for 2020 to see that the cause-specific mortality rate for heart disease is the same, 4 out of 1,000. So in both years, the risk of heart disease death in the general population is 4 in 1,000. The increase in proportionate mortality is due to the fact that there were fewer deaths in 2020, so the same number of heart disease, heart disease deaths makes up a greater fraction of all deaths. So now that we've introduced some primary ways of measuring mortality, we'll discuss another immensely important topic in disease measurement, that of crude measures and adjusted measures. When talking about morbidity or mortality rates, it's important to recognize that these rates might depend on factors other than the disease of interest. Age is a major one of these factors. When we ignore the influence of other factors, what we calculate is called a crude rate. We need to take care when interpreting crude rates for two main reasons. First, within a population, crude rates hide the influence of these other important factors. Second, if these other factors have different distributions between populations, comparisons of crude rates between populations are misleading. Direct standardization is one way for us to improve on crude rates. When using this technique, we compute expected mortality rates for all populations being compared 
if these populations had the same distribution of a key factor influencing mortality. Usually this factor is age. If populations have different age distributions, then we would automatically expect differences in mortality simply due to age. So in standardization, we assume that all populations being compared have the same age distribution, and we compute expected mortality rates under this assumption. These expected mortality rates are called age-adjusted mortality rates, and they give us a more fair comparison of mortality than crude rates do. So let's look at an example of how direct standardization works. Suppose that we're comparing the crude yearly all-cause mortality rates in Florida and Minnesota. Florida has a higher crude mortality rate than Minnesota, 9.9 .9 deaths in one year per 100,000 per 1,000 population versus 7.1. However, looking at the mortality rates specific to the three age groups, we actually see a different story. For all age groups, Minnesota actually has higher mortality rates. The higher crude mortality rate for Florida is due to it having an older population than Minnesota. The underlying age distributions in this example are shown on the right. In this example, compar comparisons of mortality rates within age groups was quick and they told a clear story. There were only three age categories and the mortality rates in one population were uniformly higher than in the other population. Oftentimes there are many more age categories and not such a clear difference in the age group specific rates. In those cases, we can use the direct standardization method to compute an adjusted mortality rate for each population. To do this, we first need to identify the age distribution of a standard population. We'll assume that both states have the age distribution of the standard population. In this way, differences in mortality between the states can't be due to age since we've made the age distributions identical. There are tons of different choices for a standard population. We can pick any three percentages that add up to 100. Let's just use the United States population as the standard population, which we'll say has an age distribution of 25, 35, and 40% for young, middle-aged, and old. To make the units in the following calculations clear, we'll say that the total US population size is 100,000, but we actually don't need this. We only need the percentages rather than the numbers of people in each age category. So with the standard population, we can compute the expected number of deaths in each age category for both Florida and Minnesota. Let's start with Florida. The yearly mortality rate in the young is two per 1,000 population. So with 25,000 young people, the expected number of deaths in this age group is 50. The yearly mortality rate in the middle-aged is five per 1,000 population. So with 35,000 middle-aged people, the expected number of deaths in this age group is 175. Finally, we can do the same for the old age group to get 640 expected deaths. In total, this is 865 deaths in the standard population, which has 100,000 people. This amounts to an age-adjusted yearly mortality rate of 8.65 per 1,000. Repeating this process for Minnesota, we get an age-adjusted yearly mortality rate of 11.2 per 1,000 population. Now we can more fairly compare Florida and Minnesota because they have been put on equal footing by being forced to have the same age distribution. Now it seems that Minnesota, rather than Florida, has more need for health-related funding. So this age adjustment analysis is not to say that the crude rates are completely useless. They are indeed useful if our public health interest is purely the rate of deaths in the two states which could be useful for planning public services. One quick note about the calculations. We could have just used the age group percentages in the standard, in the standard population without first needing to create age group counts. 
The calculations are shown on the right, and this amounts to calculating the age-adjusted rates as weighted averages. But stepping back from the math, let's take a moment to review the point of all of this. Standardization gives us a way to fairly make comparisons, often between different populations, but also within a single population over time. So in summary, we've learned about three ways of measuring mortality, general mortality rates, case fatality, and proportionate mortality. These capture risk of death in different groups of people and help identify major causes of death in a population. An important theme that has been brought up in this video is that of adjustment. This is the idea that there are many factors that affect disease-related outcomes and that these factors need to be considered carefully when making comparisons. We introduced adjustment in this video in the context of mortality because the need to consider age when examining mortality rates is pretty salient. However, adjustment is important in studying morbidity as well. The procedure for direct adjustment of morbidity measures is the same as what we discussed here. Concepts of adjustment will come up again later in this course when we discuss study designs and measures for understanding associations between disease outcomes and other factors.